Good morning. My name is Matt Miller. I'm the Executive Director of the Institute for Justice, Texas Chapter. With me are Scott Bullock, Senior Attorney at Institute for Justice Headquarters in Virginia, and Zahir Al-Ali, our client in this case. We're here to discuss civil asset forfeiture in Texas. Texas has some of the worst civil forfeiture laws in the country. Under criminal forfeiture, the state must convict you of a crime before they can seize assets that were used in connection with that crime. Under civil forfeiture, your assets can be seized, you can never even be charged with a crime, and the burden is on you to prove that you're innocent of a crime in order to get your assets back. Also in Texas, police can use up to 90% of the assets they, they seize to pay for police salaries, cars, facilities, and other equipment. We call that policing for profit, and it is documented in a new Institute for Justice report which gives Texas a grade of a D minus for its civil forfeiture laws. It's my pleasure to introduce Scott Bullock, senior attorney, to discuss the case that we filed this morning. Thank you, Matt. This morning, we filed a constitutional challenge against Texas's civil forfeiture laws. In this suit, we aim to stop both policing for profit and also to provide much needed protections for innocent property owners who happen to find themselves caught up in a civil forfeiture process. In America, a person is supposed to be innocent until they are proven guilty. But under asset forfeiture laws, a person's property is guilty and then the property owner must prove it innocent. That turns a fundamental American principle on its head. The burden should be on the government if it wants to take your property, and property owners should not lose their property without being convicted of a crime. Likewise, police and prosecutors being paid on commission must end. This perverse profit incentive that exists under Texas law must be stopped. Civil forfeiture funds should go to the general revenue account of the state or to a neutral fund like drug treatment or education, not right back to the very people who are out there prosecuting these laws. It really does create a perverse incentive system and it steers law enforcement priorities away from the fair and impartial administration of justice and toward the pursuit of property. This case today that we are become, we've become involved in is entitled State of Texas versus one 2004 Chevrolet Silverado. And that is one of the odd things about civil forfeiture laws. It allows the government to sue pieces of property. It is our pleasure to be able to uh, represent in this case uh, a person by the name of Zahar El Ali. Mr. Ali, everybody calls him Ali in Houston, is a classic immigrant success story. He came to this country from his native Jordan in the late 1970s with $500 in his pocket, knowing no one. He went to college, he started in the insurance business. He had a dream, however, of starting his own business, of really fulfilling the American dream. And that's what he did. He bought real estate, he rehabilitated the real, rehabilitated the real estate, sold it to others, and he started doing the same thing for automobiles as well. And that is where he got a hard lesson in the operation of Texas's civil forfeiture laws. In 2004, he sold the Silverado truck to a man uh, who gave him $500 down and agreed to pay the rest on credit. Like everybody who sells cars on credit, Mr. Ali kept the title to the car. He even registered the car in his own name and title would not transfer to the person until he paid for the car. Well, unfortunately, in July of last year, the driver of the car was arrested for driving while intoxicated. Along with being arrested, Mr. Ali's truck was seized for civil forfeiture. He got in touch with the sheriff's department, he got in touch with the DA, he gave them copies of the title of the registration saying, this is my truck, this man has stopped paying me because he's in jail, I would like to get my truck back. The state of Texas responded to all of this by filing a civil forfeiture action against Mr. Ali's truck. The burden is now on Mr. Ali to try to get his property back. This is wrong, it has to stop, and we are here to represent him to protect 
innocent property owners and to try to stop police and prosecutors from being paid on commission. So it's my pleasure to introduce to you Mr. Uh, Ali, who will say a few words about his participation in this important constitutional case. Mr. Ali. Thank you. My name is Zahar A. Ali. I am a citizen of the city of Houston. I sold my truck to the gentleman, Mr. Robert, and uh, he, he, he had a situation where he's not able to pay for it. It's my right to get my truck back. He, it's my truck. I still own the truck. I still own the title to the truck. My truck did not do anything wrong. It was driven by somebody else. I had done nothing to be served with a lawsuit. They served me a lawsuit. I have to answer. What did I do wrong? I'm trying to make a living just like everybody else. They put me with a burden. I have to hire an attorney. This is not fair. This law is wrong. That's why I'm here asking for my truck and I'm asking for this law to be changed. Thank you.